Hi there. Welcome to this week's episode of Waste 360's Unpacking Recycling with Charlotte. My name is Charlotte Dreisen and I am really excited to talk with you today about all things plastic film. We talked about plastic film a little bit in one of our very first episodes on plastic and plastic in general, both film and rigid, but we are going to dive into the nitty gritty of plastic film today and talk about what kinds of plastic are used for plastic film, how can we recycle it, where can we recycle it, how much of it are we collecting, and what we are doing with it once it's collected. So we are going to do just a full high level landscape of the plastic film universe today, um, which is a topic that I am so passionate about. It is one that I think folks are really interested in, but don't get a lot of recycling education on, and is really the next frontier as we continue to move away from rigid plastic packaging and paper packaging and glass and metal for a lot of packaging formats and use some more innovative plastic film constructs, a trend that we've seen over the past decade, two decades, um, and is, is one that's likely going to be increasing in the future. So as we see more of plastic film out there, it's increasingly important that we know what to do with it and how to design it to be as recyclable as possible. So at a high level, it's helpful to understand that you can make plastic film out of a lot of different kinds of plastic. And not only can you make plastic film out of different kinds of plastic, but a lot of plastic film that's out there today combines different kinds of plastic or combines plastic film with metal or paper, um, other materials that can compromise its recyclability especially. So we're going to talk through a handful of different plastic film items just from a get-go. I'm surrounded by a cornucopia of uh, plastic film packaging options, formats to look at. Um, and we're going to look at ones that you can recycle and which you can't. Um, in short, today we can really only recycle polyethylene, pure polyethylene plastic film, and that's generally through a retailer and store drop off network that exists throughout the country in many, many communities. Plastic film cannot be recycled curbside today in the United States. There are very, very few pilot programs going on. In 99% of the United States, it is a contaminant for curbside recycling systems. And the reason is, is that plastic film, no matter what it's made of, when it's introduced into the curbside recycling stream, it gets into recycling equipment equipment and jams the equipment and facilities have to shut down entirely so workers can climb in and cut plastic film out. And it's actually one of the biggest reasons that workers at recycling facilities get injured. So it's especially important for us to keep out of the curbside recycling stream because workers get injured. It makes facilities need to shut down. What doesn't get jammed up in equipment compromises the quality of the end products and plastic that we are collecting and sorting at recycling facilities. Um, and in general, it adds a ton of cost to the curbside recycling system because as you need to shut down equipment and facilities to get all of the plastic film out, that adds cost to operations if they have to shut down entirely once, twice, three, four, five, six times a day. Depending on how much contamination a recycling facility receives, almost, you know, the, the vast majority of contamination is plastic film or recyclables put into plastic film bags. So it is the, you know, the worst contaminant that curbside recycling programs see. But that is not to say that we cannot recycle plastic film, some plastic film in dedicated channels at retail locations. Um, many retailers and many grocery stores op offer drop off for plastic film. We're going to talk more in just a little bit about where you can find those, what those look like, um, and some more details around that. But let's start off with just looking at a range of plastic film items and kind of at a high level plastic film items we use film or flexible packaging as kind of a catch-all category to consumers to a lot of folks when you say plastic film or flexible packaging flexible plastic they don't necessarily know what you mean a lot of rigid plastic can feel flexible and you know if you have an empty milk jug for instance which we consider rigid plastic in the recycling and packaging industry to a consumer you know they can squeeze it it might feel flexible to them so it's important to know that it is difficult to use that term to communicate communicate with a lot of folks externally. So a lot of times it might make more sense to say plastic bags and wrap or plastic bags and film to give a little more context to consumers about what exactly the, the kind of soft plastics that you're referring to are. Soft plastics tends to be the term that's used a lot in Europe and in the UK. But on, on the US side of things in North America, we most often say plastic bags and, and wrap generally speaking. So what might be the most iconic example of a plastic film item that we encounter day to day is a plastic takeout bag. So something that looks just like this. Um, this is what my Indian takeout came in last night um, that you might get from a restaurant, from a grocery store, from a pharmacy. 
Um, and uh, that's something that, you know, a lot of communities have banned single use plastic bags or have added, um, you know, five cent or 10 cent or a couple cent fees onto single use plastic bags to try and discourage their use. They make up a really high portion of ocean plastic, which we covered in our last episode last week um, on ocean plastic. So head there to learn more about plastic bags and film in that context. But something like a takeout bag is a highly recyclable PE or polyethylene item in that dedicated store drop off channel. Channel. So it is pure polyethylene. It is good to go. That's a white bag. That's something that's highly recyclable in that dedicated store drop off stream. There are a lot of other pure polyethylene bags and, and wraps that we can recycle too. And the important thing is to look out for um, a number two or a number four resin identification code. That's another topic we covered in a dedicated episode. A number two or a number four tells you that it is either low density polyethylene or high density polyethylene, which we call LDPE or HDPE, one of the two. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is pure polyethylene and that it doesn't have something done to it that is compromising. It's ability to be recycled in the store drop off stream, but it gives you pretty good indication, the best indication you often have on a package. The other thing you can look out for is a how to recycle label with a store drop off label. We'll look at one of those in just a moment too, but there are a lot of packaging formats that you can reliably know are pure polyethylene and that you can recycle via store drop off. So a couple of those are bread bags. So something like, like a bread bag like this, pure polyethylene, this can be recycled in store drop off. Something like a Ziploc. A Ziploc bag is also pure polyethylene. So is the zipper. Sometimes folks are concerned that the blue and pink pieces here, blue and purple, uh, aren't the same material. It is all polyethylene. It is all pure polyethylene and can be brought to a store drop off too. It's really important when you bring plastic film items to a store drop off that they are always clean and dry. That's really important to remember. So sometimes I have what is a pure polyethylene bag that I have um, you know, produce in and I have lettuce that's wet and I either have to dry out that pure polyethylene bag to bring it to store drop off or I should put it in the trash. It can't be accepted wet. Cereal bags. Cereal bags are another pure polyethylene item that we can recycle via store drop off. Um, they look and feel a bit different. They're thicker um, and are a somewhat different formulation, but they are the exact same plastic and can be recycled via store drop off. Another polyethylene item that we can recycle a lot of and that all folks really have at some point or another is overwrap for toilet paper or paper towels. Um, so something like this, which has the how to recycle store drop off logo, which I'll zoom in on here for you, um, can also be brought to store drop off. We all generate a lot more pure polyethylene film than we might expect. It makes up a really pretty big portion of the overall plastic that we use. So if you aren't taking your pure polyethylene film to a store drop off, you aren't recycling and managing all the plastic that you're generating as responsibly as you could be. Sometimes it's hard to find a drop off point to bring it to, but a lot of people have a lot of opportunities to bring it to grocery stores or retailers near them, and you should absolutely take use of them uh, when you can. But you can look out for the how to recycle store drop off just um, here. It has in the middle of that Mobius loop, the recycling symbol store drop off. That's how you know you can bring it to a store drop off location. All store drop off locations really do accept that full suite of pure polyethylene options. Another item that a lot of us have on our doorsteps are Amazon shippers. So these black and um, blue, uh, sometimes they're blue. I just started seeing gray ones um, come out here uh, recently. And they're basically made of bubble wrap. Bubble wrap is also pure polyethylene that you can recycle via store drop off. Here is the bigger example of the how to recycle label um, where it says store drop off um, and gives you an instruction to take off the paper label that comes on the shipping container. This is really important. Paper labels of any kind on any plastic film items that you would normally be able to bring to a store drop off have to be removed. Paper is a huge contaminant for plastic film recycling. The paper fibers get into everything and they are impossible to remove. So you should really cut that paper label out. They can be really hard to peel off. So I just take some scissors and snip them out. You should do the same. If you ever see a paper label, don't recycle the plastic film. If you can't remove it or you don't want to remove it, best to put that in the trash. You often see paper labels as well on e-commerce shipment bags that, you know, maybe you order a bunch of clothes online and they come in a cardboard box, but each item is in a, in a pure polyethylene bag. Sometimes they'll have a little skew label, a paper label on them. That should be removed.
There are a lot of plastic film items, though, that aren't pure polyethylene um, or that use some polyethylene but are fused with other materials as well. Um, a great example of this are grape bags. If you ever buy a bunch of grapes, they come in kind of that perforated um, pouch with a handle. Those are made of polypropylene, so they cannot be brought to the store drop off stream and recycled. Um, but there are a few examples I have here of other multi laminate plastic film or other plastic films that have have foil linings. Something like a stand up pouch like this granola container, this granola package, this would be considered a multi laminate plastic film item. So it likely uses a lot of different kinds of plastic um, to provide different, you know, different properties like UV protection or oxygen barrier protection to protect the food that's inside it and help it, you know, stay fresh. Unfortunately, the trade off means that it can't be brought to store drop off because it is not pure PE. A couple other examples of this. Oftentimes you'll see crackers or, um, you know, and a lot of things that you buy in a, in a paperboard, you know, cereal box like box. Um, if you if you will, and uh, something that that's shiny like this that has a metal foil or metal metalization on it would also be a contaminant to the to the polyethylene recycling store drop off recycling stream. Um, so whatever it has, you know, in terms of plastic, it also has a metalized foil lining and we don't want, you know, that in the stream so that can't be recycled. Another really iconic example is something like a candy wrapper. Candy wrappers are plastic film, um, just like this one here, but unfortunately are made with a mix of materials. They aren't generally polyethylene or at least pure polyethylene and, and do need to be put in the trash. Unfortunately, we can't recycle those today. Um, so those are just a handful of examples of plastic film items that you likely have in your house and hopefully are bringing to a recycling drop off at a grocery store or retailer. Um, there are a couple of companies that have really gone above and beyond to provide recycling options for plastic film at their locations. Target and Ikea are two great examples of them, but a lot of major grocery stores and retailers also provide those options. The one that I go to closest to me in DC has two big plastic film bins, recycling bins right next to the front door, but they are sometimes harder to find. A lot of times you kind of have to look around and hunt for a plastic film recycling drop off bin at a grocery store. Sometimes it's behind the customer service desk. One of the big takeaways over COVID and the pandemic has been that a lot of grocery store locations have moved those plastic bin uh, bins from the front of their their you know door to behind customer service and and you know you need to then ask someone at customer service to take your plastic bags, which can be a bit of a pain, but um, they often are located there if you don't see one immediately. But it is unfortunate that today it is really hit or miss whether a grocery store will offer plastic film recycling or um, or if you're just out of luck and need to keep looking for a location. Um, PlasticFilmRecycling.org and WRAP are two places you can look for uh, for a map of locations. It isn't always the most up to date, which can be really challenging. And this is one thing that the industry can definitely do a better job of providing people for uh, people information on where they, they can go. In Washington, D.C., for instance, we have um, a, a big reduction in stores that have taken plastic film in, in recent years, um, especially over COVID. There's been a pretty meaningful drop off, but there are still plenty, plenty of locations. So it's a big, a big challenge for folks to be able to take a look at an online map and maybe need to try three or four different times before they, they have some luck and find a, a store that will take their plastic film. On the back end, on the operational side, pure polyethylene can be a big revenue generator for stores, especially if they have reverse logistics in the distribution center that they're bringing trucks and, you know, normally what might be empty space in a truck back to their facility. If they fill it with plastic film, which has a strong end market in a lot of communities in the US, um, that is a revenue generation opportunity, especially if that plastic film is bailed. So another opportunity that we can better support plastic film recycling is to help retailers and distribution centers get bailers for plastic film so they condense it and can pack it all down to then transport and make more efficiently um, and make that more efficient. It's really challenging sometimes for smaller and more medium sized retailers and grocery stores to be able to get those logistics to work well if they don't have a distribution center that they're bringing all of their trucks back to. You know, a, a one off mom and pop grocery store might have a much harder time finding a way to, to accept plastic film and to, to have a, get it to a processor and facility that will accept it. But it can be done. It definitely is done in a lot of locations. And there's also really great opportunities that exist for recycling drop off centers that accept curbside recycling recyclables to also start accepting plastic film to be able to, to provide residents and hopefully businesses too an option to bring their plastic film. But we do generate a lot of plastic film 
EPA estimates that we generate about 9 billion pounds of plastic film a year. This makes up a really meaningful chunk of the overall plastic that we generate. And those estimates might very well be very low. California has estimated that they alone produce 2.6 billion pounds of plastic film, much of which is that recyclable pure polyethylene film. And we don't do a very good job of recycling it today. In DC, for instance, we only recycle about an estimated 2% of the plastic film that we generate, albeit some of it can't be recycled. Some of it is going to be those candy wrappers and chip bags, but a lot of it is going to be those pure polyethylene items like cereal bags and bread bags and bubble wrap and Amazon shippers that, that we can take to store drop-offs if we have access to them. California for a time required grocery stores and retailers to provide bins for folks to bring them back to. Um, and a lot of opportunities exist for us to better have uh, legislation that requires recycled content for plastic film and provide a real end market for plastic film to be located. So New Jersey, for instance, has just passed legislation recently that requires a minimum amount of recycled content for plastic bags. Something like a takeout bag would require 20% recycled content, post-consumer recycled content, and trash bags would require about 10%. This provides opportunities and incentives for plastic film recycling to take place and better options to be provided for folks, both businesses and residents to, uh, to recycle plastic film. Out of all the plastic film that we generate, a minority is generated by residents in DC, for instance, only about one quarter of plastic film that the city produces as a whole is from residents. And they really need those opportunities in retailers and grocery stores, and perhaps even one day, um, dedicated drop-offs or um, pick up curbside separate from their normal curbside recycling bin. About three quarters of the plastic film we generate in DC though, is generated by businesses like restaurants and grocery stores themselves in the back of house. And all of that plastic film, especially plastic film that wraps pallets, um, is really clean, high quality material that should definitely, you know, they have less contamination challenges um, to recycle and, and make up about half of, of the, the material that we recycle. So out of the 900 million pounds that is collected for plastic film that is recycled today, about half is either clear or colored PE film. About 27% is retail bags. Um, about 15, 16% is agricultural film film and about 8% is other plastic film items. So we definitely have a diversity of sources that we collect plastic film from today. A lot of it is from residents, but a really huge portion is from businesses as well that can do a, a really easy job of collecting that back of house. Um, and, and they really, you know, can can leverage reverse logistics and distribution centers to get it back into the supply chain and to a, a dedicated facility to process it. Overall today, we have the capacity to process about 1.1 billion pounds of plastic film. That's a lot more plastic film than we're collecting. So there is ample processing capacity in the US and in North America. One of the really exciting developments is that since 2005, we've not only increased plastic film recycling, but we've increased it by 54%. There is a huge amount to grow, but there's been exciting momentum to date. And not only are we increasing the overall amount of plastic film that we're collecting for recycling, but we are also recycling humongously larger amounts more domestically in the US um, or in North America, in the US and Canada, where we have a lot of faith that those operations are managing the material responsibly. 82% of the plastic film that was collected in the most recent year we have data for in 2020 um, was processed domestically, which is a huge achievement. We were exporting a humongous amount, the majority of that material, just a decade or so ago. So the growth in our domestic processing capacity for plastic film has really skyrocketed. But as we do that, we want to be thinking about the quality of the plastic film that we're recycling. So when we think about all of the plastic film items that we could recycle, we know that we can dye it or add pigments or additives that might compromise its recyclability. A couple examples of that. So we looked at kind of the classic white takeout bag that we know we can bring to a store drop off and recycle. Well, white or clear is, is optimal. We know that when we introduce material back into, into the commodity market, folks want the most flexible, high quality product they can get comparable to virgin plastic. And the more color and dyes and additives you add to it, the lower the quality and more challenging it is for a new producer to take that material and recycle it. So it's preferred that that you know PE film is clear or white in minimal dyes and pigments like that red text you saw on it. Um, next best is something that's light colored. So something that is buff or cream or a light color, something that might be more similar to, to this PE bag, um, something like a light brown that probably wouldn't impact it meaningfully. What is really challenging to be recycled in the PE film stream is something that's black or very dark. So something like this would likely be 
not ideal for a processor to take. You should still bring it to a PE film recycling drop off to a store drop off, but we just want manufacturers to use less of it and to start using more preferable colors and pigments. However, if you do have a black bag like me that has metallic print on it, something like this metallic shiny gold um, uh, print here, the design is something that would contaminate the load of recycling and distribute, disperse that metallic gold dye into the overall overall material, which is something that's really hard to convince a, you know, a producer to then buy and put into their new product that they have very specific design parameters for. So we always want to be thinking about, you know, anytime you move from a pure, unadulterated, clear or white polyethylene layer of, of a plastic piece of plastic film, anything we do to it, we want to make sure that it's not compromising the recyclability of it. A couple other examples of something that we might be you know doing to a plastic film item that might be making it more challenging to recycle includes additives as a consumer you might not you know think a lot about what the additives you're adding to a plastic film item are but on the on the industry side we think a lot about you know what oxygen and light barriers and moisture barriers a product needs to ensure that the product that they're you know they're selling to you in that plastic film item stays fresh and usable and you know not compromised in any way shape or form when you do add additives to plastic film it tends to make it more dense and one of the important steps of the plastic film recycling process is putting it in what we call a float sink tank so if something um, you know, like plastic film, normally it has a density lower than water, so it floats. When you add a lot of additives to a plastic film item, and sometimes that might just mean color and pigment like that black bag, it might tip the density over the number one or uh, you know, approaching that number one where it starts to get really close to the density of water and sometimes more dense than it, which means that it'll sink. So it won't, in the float sink test, you want plastic film to rise to the top, to, to float to the top. And if you're producing plastic film that's really dense and heavy, it'll sink. And we know it won't perform in the sorting process like we need it to, to be able to recycle it effectively. So there's a lot of design parameters that exist the Association of Plastics Recyclers has an excellent guide to PE film and other plastics um, to think exactly about what kind of closures and dyes and pigments and additives that uh, that you should be keeping in mind if you're in the position to design and influence plastic film. On the consumer side, when we're all using plastic film, it's just something to keep in mind that, you know, recycle the plastic film. If it doesn't have a paper label, no matter the color, stay away from metallics, though. That is a big problem. And and, you know, we'll do our best as an industry to hopefully steer the plastic film we all use on a daily basis to more preferable options that are clear and white to provide that highest value in the end market. But there are some really exciting innovations that are taking place in the plastic film space to make plastic film even more recyclable. One great example of this is a company called VO Plus that's creating microscopic or nano sized holes or voids in plastic film that allow it to have that opaque and white color without pigment or dye and to remove the need for those pigments and dyes so it doesn't increase the density of plastic film, making it sink in the float sink process. So it's achieving that goal of giving a consumer a white bag without needing, you know, needing it to use pigment. And it also, in fact, makes it stronger while reducing the amount of material that's used by about 35%. So that's one great example of how one company is going about making more effective recycl uh, recyclable plastic film um, while using less material, which is so important. And we know that not only should we be striving to use the least amount of material for all of our products and packaging, but also using the most amount of recycled content we can. And plastic film is no exception. We know that we make, you know, for example, polyethylene that is both high density and low density, either with a number two or a number four resin identification code that is both in you know, rigid plastic um, constructs as well as plastic film. One of the really exciting things is that we're now able to use recycled content from recycled plastic film in more end uses and in more applications at higher levels than we ever have before. Just 10 years ago, it was difficult, if not impossible, to create plastic film, new plastic film, from recycled plastic film. But there are a number of companies that are now doing that and achieving really great results. It is, you know, just the other day that I had a um, a couple online orders come in where, you know, one plastic shipping mailer said 50% recycled content and the other said 100% recycled content. That is really new to the scene and it is difficult and more expensive to do. So it's really exciting to see brands and retailers kind of walking the walk and committing to use that and pay the premium for it. 
It's also something that we see an increasing portion of the recycled plastic film that we collect go to. About 46% of plastic film that we collect for recycling goes to plastic decking or lumber, which is a really phenomenal end use. Trex, which has a massive operation not so far from me in DC in Winchester, Virginia, is uh, is the, really the big player there. But um, plenty of plastic film goes back into plastic film um, or sheeting now, about 30 so or so percent. Um, and then about 12 or so percent goes into rigid plastic applications. You know, from that number two and number four plastic film that we collect, that low or high density polyethylene, plenty of it is now going back into rigid number two or number four containers like a milk jug, for instance. Um, so really exciting to see a huge amount of movement there. And of course, a tremendous increase in our domestic processing abilities for it. Really exciting also to see movement on legislation and requirements for retailers to collect plastic film and offer plastic film drop off bins for, you know, Know, from grocery stores and retailers, um, as well as requirements for folks to have a minimum amount of recycled content for plastic bags, you know, whether it's a takeout bag or a trash bag or any of the many other packaging options in between. Uh, but with that, I am so curious to learn about whether you drop off plastic film for recycling, if you knew that stream existed. I'm hoping you don't put any in your curbside recycling bin knowing that plastic film contaminates it, but please do, as always, drop any questions that come to mind in the bottom of this video on Waste360's page, or feel free to, to send a tweet to Shar Dryzen on Twitter or at Shar Recycles on Instagram. Thanks so much for tuning to this week's episode of Unpacking Recycling with Charlotte on Waste360.